Hi crafters, this is Crafty Savvy and I'm here today to share a quick tutorial with you, um, something I've been working on. Um, so as you guys all know, uh, glassine bags are like pretty much a staple um, if you make junk journals or journals of any type. Um, we seem to be using them a lot and um, they're great. I love them. Um, for putting into my journals and for packaging things up and um, so I got to thinking about how um, I could make my own because I seem to go through them quite a bit and you know we get these kind at this one happens to be Michael's but other places and um, so glassine bags I'm, I don't know if they come in different sizes this seems to be the size that I usually get but you know pretty simple so I got to thinking about how um, I could make my own. So I was at the uh, grocery store the other day and um, I decided to pick up a roll of parchment paper. So it comes on a roll. Um, you know, I just got it in a box. And this parchment paper is about, I, I get about 10 meters on it. So you really get a lot. I mean, I made a bunch and I still got tons, so. Um, <clears throat> you probably could use wax paper and I have an example of one that I did. It's not quite the same, um, but I mean, if that's all you had, you could probably uh, get away with it. Um, I'm not even really 100% sure if the ones that we buy are exactly parchment paper. I think that these happen to be a little thicker. Um, but then again, I don't know. But this is the closest thing that I can find. So we're gonna do it with that. So um, here's an example of all of the ones I made. Let me just get this out of the way. So I made these ones. Little bag. Um, I tried to do them the same. I tapered the edges. I got my little crimpy scissors or whatever you call them and I cut the ends. You, you don't have to do it. Some of them I notched out, some I didn't, but here you go. So it's so simple. So um, the first thing I did was I cut down my parchment paper. So I did a whole bunch. So I still have a bunch to go here. But um, I cut the parchment paper down to nine and a quarter on the long side by eight. So um, if I remember, then I'll put all the measurements down at the bottom. But um, so for now, uh, nine and a quarter by eight is the size um, that I used in order to get um, about a seven, let me see what this is. I think these are a little smaller, uh, but the measurements I'm giving you um, are going to be, yeah, so that's about seven by four and a half. So it's about the same size as the ones that we, we purchase at Michael's. Um, so that's good. So um, we'll take a piece of that parchment paper that we cut to nine and a quarter by eight. We'll get our scoring tool, scoring board, sorry and we'll put it in at the nine and a quarter inch side and we'll score. Um, so the first score mark that you'll make is at two and a quarter. So right there, which I'm not even showing you, am I? <laughs> two and a quarter. And then the, uh, whoops, and the next um, score mark that you'll make is at six and three quarters. So over here, six and three quarters. So pretty straightforward, right? So two and a quarter and six and three quarters. And that's it for that. So I can hardly tell a difference between the two sides. If I were to say there might be a bit, of, this might be a little bit more, um, not as smooth but I, I don't really care when it comes to, so you can choose if you can feel something and you want the shiny on the outside, uh, that, that's totally up to you. So we'll just uh, fold on those score marks now. Then 
there and there. And that's that. So the other thing I discovered was I couldn't use um, my ATG wouldn't stick and um, my double sided tape wouldn't stick. So I would put it on here and then it would just peel off like you didn't do anything. So wet glue is kind of the best thing. So what you want to do, this is what I did. I took a scrap piece of paper and I just kind of folded it up so that it would kind of fit in here. And I, I'm doing that because once you put the glue on here and if it, anything oozes out and then you try to do it this way and you close it and you rub it, then the glue is going to ooze out and then everything is going to stick together. Like you'll never be able to get in there. So just a quick tip. I just put this in here all the way to one side. Usually I just put it all the way to this side there. And then on this side here, you could just run a small bead of glue. Uh, I just kind of went as close to the edge as I could. And you fold this one over and seal it shut. So not gonna lie, when you first do it and they're drying, they, they kind of they kind of look a little wavy and bumpy and you might say like, what the heck, but once they're dry, um, they're really not that bad. So you don't see on anything on the front there if you do it this way. And and it's just a little bit on the back. So not that not that bad. Plus, you know, if you're anything like me, you're gonna end up covering it and doing things to it. It's not really gonna matter too much. So I'd probably let that dry a little bit, but for the interest of time, we'll just kind of move forward. So then the other thing that I did was Oh, I put everything away and now I can't find anything. I had, um, I kind of wanted that uh, sort of jagged look um, that you get from the store. Um, and some of you probably have scissors that do that. I thought I did, but I can't find them anywhere. But what I did have was just kind of like this. And it really, it doesn't bother me too much that it's, uh, not the same, but it, it still works. So probably at this point, I would um, go ahead and do the cutting now uh, for the top. So that's what I get. So now you could either choose to do it on the bottom two, which you're gonna end up folding anyways. Some I did and some I didn't. Um, I don't particularly care, and just to save time, I'm, I'm not going to do it. But you can go ahead and do it in both places if you'd like. So um, so that was the top. So on this side that we glued, we, we want to uh, fold up the bottom. So uh, I'm going to eyeball it, but you can measure it's half an inch. So you want to just go half an inch up and fold, just like that. Okay. And then um, you want to taper these edges a little bit. So I just uh, snip off those edges there. And that's that. So I'm just going to get my little dirty shim here again. <laughs> and now you're going to have two pieces. So I would probably just put some wet glue in between those to stick them together. and then um, some more glue to seal the whole thing shut. There. Easy breezy, right? It's so easy, it's almost ridiculous. But you know what? Um, I think we're all about trying to save some money and some time, so if you could you know, get a whole bunch of these done and put them in your stash, then you know you have them. So, and, and that's that. That's it, it's done. Just as easy as that. So, um, what else did I wanna tell you about those? So, I made a whole bunch. Oh, uh, I just wanna show you another quick 
tip. Um, th this is really hard. Like if you wanted to put a notch in it, like I did with some of these, right there, um, it's hard to uh, punch through this wax paper. So a quick tip is, oops, sorry. I'm trying to find a scrap piece of paper. was my stuff falling down. Okay. So uh, if you wanted to make a notch up here in any kind of um, sort of flimsy paper or wax paper, um, if you try to punch it, sometimes you end up tearing it or whatever. So if you just get a scrap piece of paper and fold it in half, you could use that crease to kind of uh, wrap around the top of your bag. And then um, this way you got got it on both sides. And then you can use your punch um, to center everything and then punch it that way. And it makes a nice clean half circle for you. So um, just a quick tip there. And then the other thing too I forgot to do is um, the ones that you get at Michael's, you can also, uh, they, they come with the edges kind of um, clipped on the side. I can never make them even, but anyways. Okay, so more or less. So you could do that if you wanted to as well. So I thought they were super cute and so easy to do. So that's that. So um, I just have a couple of examples of some of the one, what I did with some of them. So I, um, me loving everything vintage, I tried to coffee stain them. So that's one that's been coffee stained. Um, it was a little hard to do. Uh, it seems like the coffee just sort of wanted to pool on top, like bead on top. So it really took a little bit of effort and still I got this kind of splotchy effect. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Maybe it has something to do with what side you're doing it on. I'm not too sure, but I've yet to discover. <laughs> but it's okay. So, so that was a coffee stained one. So, and then this one here is actually made out of wax paper. Um, I tried it with wax paper and it's still good, but you can kind of hear and feel that it's not really the same, but still good. So you can, you can, and I think I even used double-sided tape on this, which seemed to hold. So I don't know really what the difference is. I also ran this through the, the um, my Sizzix machine, my, uh, like a, your cuddle bug or whatever you, uh, you can run it through. This one is honeycomb. And when I ran it through, it was fine. Um, it didn't break the paper, um, but I noticed that when I tried to put some of these out of the parchment paper through the cuddle bug and um, I, I end, ended up tearing some places. So I'm not sure again what the difference is, but it didn't work for me. It might work for you, maybe too much pressure. I don't know, but they're kind of nice with um, something embossed on them too. So Th that kind of goes to show that, you know, you can use wax paper if that's what you have. It's perfectly fine. And then I just have an example of one that I sort of did up. Um, so this is a full size bag and I just took the bottom and I folded it up. I glued it here and here to make a pocket. And so there's the pocket. I just um, put some decorative paper on it. I cut a doily in half and kind of stuck it in there. Um, this is some trim and a little flower. And I just got a little note card there, put it in there. And then inside the bag, I just have a tag. A little library card right inside there. So you can put them in your journals, attach them in your journals, or do whatever you want with them. So nice idea though. So I thought that came out really good. So um, that's my quick, tutorial on glassine bags. Maybe they're not the same as glassine bags. I don't know, but I think they're still, um, we're still able to use them and they serve the same function and purpose. 
and I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, give it a try because it's quick and easy and uh, and that is it. So hope you guys are all doing well and uh, hope to talk to you all real soon. Take care guys. Bye.